This is the rise stitch, and I like it for several reasons. First of all, because it produces a really attractive grid of stitches. These are created by knitting through the back of a stitch, through the back of the loop, and on the reverse side, it's ribbing. So you have nice columns of knit stitches and purl stitches, but the purl columns are actually alternating between knit and purl stitches. So it produces a really nice textured pattern on both sides of your fabric. And here's how it's done. When working the rise stitch, cast on an odd number of stitches if you're working flat. So your stitch repeat is two plus one, and your row repeat is two rows. So you'll start the first row by knitting into the back of the first stitch. So insert your needle, your right needle that is, into the back of the stitch and knit that stitch. Now bring the yarn to the front and purl. And that's your pattern for the stitch repeat. So to do it again, knit through the back of the next stitch, bring the yarn to the front and purl to the back and knit through the back of the next stitch, bring the yarn to the front and purl and repeat that pattern till you get to the last stitch in the row. When you get to the end of your row, you will finish by simply knitting through the back of the very last stitch. Now row two in this two row pattern couldn't be simpler. All you do is knit every stitch to the end of the row. Now that's the rise stitch. Now I'll share with you that if you want to work this stitch pattern in the round instead of flat, all you do is purl the second row instead of knitting it. It's as simple as that. And now I'll show you a sweater that I've created with this stitch pattern. And I hope that you'll come and visit my website. It's jamescoxknits.com. And while you're there, please sign up for my newsletter, James Knit Notes. Every issue includes a knitting tip. Thanks. I'm James Cox, and I can't stop knitting. <laughs>